Well, good morning, folks. It's a Saturday morning, and we've got our usual length of session. It's uh, going to be about an hour and ten minutes or so, so we'll see what we can get done. I know what we have planned is to get this figure complete, and um, this is the... Um, These are the Petronels, or the cavalry stand, for my medieval German army that we've been painting over the last week or so. I'll take a look at them, but of course, uh, we'll go ahead and flip this thing for a little bit better resolution. Ah, Mark Chin, how are you? Happy Saturday. You made it. Unless you're uh, one of those un poor, unfortunate souls that works on uh, on Saturdays. I am not. So, good. Yeah, I'll be on here for about a... Um, got here for about an hour and a half. Hour and ten minutes or so. You're off today. Excellent. Good. Uh, let's flip this around. I don't know what it is. If you guys have a phone... <laughs> a phone. Of course you have a phone. Everybody has a phone these days. <laughs> Camera has two sides. They have um, what they call the front-facing camera, and then they have the back-facing camera, which is traditionally where the camera would be. You know, normally when you film something with a phone, it's you're looking at the screen, and the side that has the camera part on it has the big camera part. Is is that one? And uh, welcome WGS, where it is. It might be tomorrow there. Malaysia? Yeah, it is. Happy Sunday. But um, the traditional side that the camera is on is the one that the screen is not on. Um, this is, I am not a camera person, so you have to explain it to me. Uh, I'm explaining it to you in layman's terms. And um, when I shoot the video with the traditional camera side, it doesn't have as good resolution, which makes no sense that the screen would have more, but it does. But hey, it's just one of those things. All right, let's get a let's get a new board. My favorite material here, and let's put these uh, figures away. If you guys saw the boxing here, the the troops of Granada are growing. Now, the nice thing about it, I didn't mention in the video, is Jeff included some lances, which are really handy because. And I have some leftover roundway figures um, that are kind of the charge. Um, and I don't have any lances for them. Well, I do now. So these are actually not going to go with these troops. We'll put them over here because um, we're going to put these guys away. I don't know. My interest in, in painting these troops went up immensely when I got these. So um, I'm not going to say they're next, but... Those would be, uh, that would be a cool army for me to do, no doubt. Buy a couple packs of Essex to supplement, and we're good to go. And, um, I like the Middle Eastern looking armies. They don't seem to perform really well for me, but I still love how they look. Um, I don't know. I don't know why they don't perform well for me. It's not because they're Middle Eastern. They're just. I don't know. It just seems like my my painting is getting better and better each time, but my gameplay is getting worse and worse each time. Well, I'd rather it be that way, not the other way around. All right, let's put some of these things away. As I like to say, after you've lost hundreds of games, losing another one is not that big a deal. <laughs> and the count for those of you guys that are keeping count the count is four Mitch needs to win four more games against me in standard day and then we'll be even 
So if he wins five games, he's going to, I already told him, he's got to take over uh, filming duties and everything else. He's going to start painting and everything. So, you know, it's on him. <laughs> you do not want to see him. I don't know what would be worse, him painting or filming? Probably filming. Filming would probably be worse. Um, I've, I've played, I've played DBA with some awful looking figures and it, the game is still a great game. You know, I want to say if I painted with unpainted figures, probably not. So that really doesn't have a reflection on it at all. Okay, let's go ahead and grab, we're going to do the basing on these guys. Okay, this is where we left off. I think this was on Saturday or Sunday where I did the goop last week. And I haven't had an opportunity to do any painting during the week. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do what we do. So we don't need to use a wet palette for this. So let's get our grab our usual suspects, which are. And one, it's kind of an apology. I really shouldn't apologize for it because you guys are doing, you guys are getting this for free, but you know, you know what I'm getting at. Um, I've started doing just about all our videos on live because what that means is when we're done filming, I'm done and then I can go do the other things that I have to do with my life. Not spend, uh, not spend a long time uh, editing. It's not the editing; it's the compile, compressing everything on the phone, which is it just takes way too long. It just takes way too long. But what's happening is the resolution on a couple of those live videos, not necessarily this live video. Um, this is pretty consistent, 720. But some of the other videos are just awful. It's like pixelated and everything. I don't know what YouTube is doing, but um, we'll have to keep trying it a little bit more. If I keep getting that same effect, not necessarily the Q and A's, but like the live Napoleonic battle and stuff we did. I, I go back and look at the video and I'm like, what the hell happened here? Why is it so damn grainy? I mean, it looks like it's almost like 240p. Which, you know, 240 doesn't even deserve a P. Oh, it's Saturday, 5 p.m. Okay. Good. No, we're going to have to find something to do in between these because, as you know, this is going to be wet and I'm not going to be able to do the dry brush. So we'll do something in between that. Maybe we'll... Uh, Maybe we'll pick out the uh, the foot troops that go with the war wagon. As typical, I have not uh, I have not decided what army is next. I still have a little bit of time. I'm thinking the war wagon is going to take a couple weeks at the rate I'm going. It's just. It just takes a while, folks, unfortunately. And I mentioned I didn't have much time to do during the week. The girls are back, but I'm not sure that's the case. I, In other words, if had they not been here, well, had they not been here, I probably would have paid last night. But... Um, I'm really tired at the end of an evening. Let's, let's grab our little tool here. Our little mag magnetic uh, base thing. I'm really tired in the evenings. I could wake up every morning at 5 a.m. and paint. But at 5 p.m., yeah, I'm burned out. So I mentioned before, I don't watch much TV. I don't find it very engaging. But I picked up a series that I had started and never finished. It's a series on Netflix called Black Mirror. And the reason I picked it up is because I wanted something different. And also, every episode is kind of its own mini movie, anywhere between 45 minutes to... Uh, an hour and 15 minutes, so. A lot of those episodes are really, 
Well, some are better than others, and a, and a couple of them are really thought-provoking. In particular, one that I saw that was a great episode. You love Black Mirror. There's this episode called White Bear. I believe it's season two, episode two. That was one of the best things I've ever seen. I was really impressed. I shouldn't say that if you guys hadn't seen it, because a lot of it is expectation. So I was expecting it to be, eh. And then that twist, man. That twist was just unbelievable. So now I'm hooked on watching them again. Unfortunately, I don't remember. Um, I saw all of season one, and um, I believe I'm through season two. The problem is, is I don't remember all the season one one, so I may have to go back and watch them. But um. The only gripe I have about them is that um, the way they're filmed is really spooky. Like a lot of the episodes are filmed like something could jump out at me, which is not the, I don't watch those kind of movies because I don't like being startled. Um, and um, they're filmed like something is, like it's, it's a different kind of movie. Um, but um, but it ends up not being the case. So um, it was like I actually made myself watch The Shining. I had never seen The Shining, and I saw it maybe two years ago. And I was sitting on the edge of my seat like something was going to jump out at me. It never did. But... I never understand why so many people uh, have a thing for that movie. It's just, I'm very disappointed when I watch things on TV most of the time. So I see something that's like, just wow. Um, yeah. It has an Alfred Hitchcock format. So, man, I haven't seen a Hitchcock movie in so long. The last one I watched is... I watched Rear Window with my daughter. I said, she's got to see that. It's such a freaking good movie. Um, I haven't seen all the Alfred Hitchcock movies. I've seen many of them, but of course I don't remember them. Um, yeah, but I love freaking Rear Window. That's a great movie. I watch it just for Grace Kelly, just for that reason alone. No, but it's it's really cool the way it shows things, but then it doesn't show things. You know, it's done in a classy way. You don't have to show people being cut to bits and stuff like that to 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 do things like that. Speaking of not showing things, <clears throat> there was a show on Hulu. It's taken down now. It's their independent show, but um, it's called something. I may get the title wrong, but it's something along the side side along the. Um, I need another sip of coffee. This isn't working. I'm tongue tongue sleep. It's a good thing I never done drugs, folks. There's no telling what I'd be talking like. <laughs> um, there's a show on Hulu called The Booth in the Back, something like that, and the main protagonist is. Uh, this actor named Xander Berkeley, and he's one of the guys that plays um, Mason. He's the guy that plays Mason in 24, if you guys seen that. And that is an excellent series. And um, the, that's another one of those that it doesn't show you anything. And basically the premise is that you have this diner where this guy is sitting in the back, played by Berkeley, who is... Um, uh, a, a guy that people come and bring their problems to. And then they describe their situation that they're stuck in. And uh, and he has this book that you never see what's written inside of it, but he consults the book and tells them a task that they need to do to change their situation, um, to improve their situation. And it's creepy the way it's filmed. It's not creepy at all. Nothing ever really is happens or jumps out at you, but he's this 
almost like Fantasy Island type Satan type character. I mean, he's not necessarily evil. But it's the, the problems and what people have to do and whether they do it or not, it's really thought provoking. And, you know, and it's not one of those that it's thought provoking and it makes you question your own morality. It's just like one of those like, damn, I wonder what I would do. You know, it, it's really. Um, that's what I mean when it's thought provoking. It makes you think like really hard what would i do in that situation not necessarily like man i need to change who i am or how i was raised or anything like that no tv makes me do that but um or books but um if you got hulu try palm springs interesting yeah i'm I, i'm not a fan of television because i just feel like i don't have to it's too mindless that's exactly the reason I don't like television. Um, I'd rather play a video game because a video game is stupid entertainment as well, but you're constantly making decisions. So um, if you have a show that makes you think while you're watching it or figuring it out, yeah, that's good too. And I do like shows that have people you don't know, actors you don't know in them because a lot of these guys are rehashes from other shows, and you think, oh, yeah, that guy's going to be the bad guy because he always gets cast as a bad guy, you know. Um, yeah, Palm Springs, okay, I'll check it out. I'll give it 10 minutes. <laughs> the Booth at the End. See, it's called The Booth at the End or The Booth in the Back is the name of that episode, of that series. And they actually made like three or four seasons or whatever. And it's just, it it seems like it's going to be, it's filmed almost like an independent film, but it's not, um, but it's not. And it seems like it would be like a horror film, but it's not, fortunately. I'm not going to recommend horror film to people. That just, I know people enjoy them, but I don't, I, I, it puts ideas in your head that just, you got no business thinking about. <laughs> no good can think can come of thinking about that stuff. <laughs> it's not what you expect. Okay, cool. Check it out. See who's in it. I'm not gonna lie to you, you put a pretty girl in there or, or somebody that I like, it, it helps, it helps the experience. It's not everything, but it helps. Okay. I'm gonna have to go to a smaller brush here in a little bit. I'm trying to find a balance for this light. Sometimes it's got my head. I wish it wasn't so cranky here. <laughs> yeah, light's getting excited again. Uh, this is for those of you guys that don't know, I use an, an Ot Light. I've had this thing for probably 10 years now. It's the best thing I ever bought. Uh, they're normally, at the time, they were about $100 a piece, and they were on sale for 50% off. So I got two of them. One's here, and the other one's in the other room. And I've had to replace the bulb on this one once. So the bulb lasts a long time. It's burning 24 watts only. And you can touch the bulb. It's not even hot. So great investment. But I've always painted in really good light. I had a, uh, before this, I had a, like a drafting table, long light that my dad had probably from 1962 or something like that. And it eventually died. And that's why I felt like I needed to replace it. That's why I'm going to have a hard time replacing my television. I, I'm not one to replace something that works with something that's better. Um, and it just seems wasteful. So 
So, you know, I'm not one of those that, oh, there's a new phone out, I got to buy it. No, you run the one you have into the ground and when it doesn't work anymore or when it gets a crack through the camera that's filming, which is what happened with my last one. That's what happened with my Samsung 8 Plus. That's why I had to get this other phone. Then, yeah, I kind of have to upgrade. Or just not take any more pictures or film videos. So I think I made the right decision. What do you think? <laughs> but I don't replace something just because something else is um, something else is cool. Not something that costs you know a couple thousand dollars or thousand dollars or something like that. That make me thrifty. I don't know. I've had I've there's been parts of my life where I've I have not had many things. So I kind of remember that. Okay, we're going to have to go and do some surgery. Let's get a surgical brush. This one should do. Just a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do I put back one? I don't remember it. Work in 30 minutes. Oh, man. On a Saturday. Oh, it's a late work for you guys. I shouldn't say on a Saturday. You may have Monday off. Like that slacker Mitch. Who was I talking to? There was, it might have been one of you guys that works seven days a week. Which, I guess if that's what you want to do. My buddy Jeff, when I used to connect with him at 4 a.m. and paint, this was, I don't know, 10 years ago probably, he was stationed in Korea. And he would get off work, and I would just be waking up, and we'd paint for a couple hours. About 10 years ago. We'd paint on Skype. And uh, that was my original Mitch. Uh, but he, would, he's, he was a painter. And yes, he could outpaint me, like speed wise. So, um, but we would, he'd be in Korea and South Korea, obviously. And, um, and I would be here. And um, he would tell me that the Koreans, I think they work seven days a week. It's just kind of a culture thing. I am. Um, man, you got to have time to do, not even hobby stuff, but you got to do time to do stuff around the house or go shopping or, you know. Um, mow the lawn or, you know. Yeah. No thanks. I like my schedule. As I like to say, when you kick as much ass as I do Monday through Friday, I don't need to work on the weekends. <laughs> I've gone in on a Saturday before, and there'll be more people that work on a Saturday than on a Friday. So it's like, well, what's the point? The whole point was to get ahead or work on something, and now I'm distracted by more people. So, no. No. I have a pretty inflexible work environment in that I need to be there to do my job and I need to be there a certain time also. Uh, so because I can't work from home or anything. Um, like I can't even check my work email from home. I could if I wanted to. I don't want to. So. Not going down that slippery slope. It's 1045 in the morning here. I work for myself, so I choose my own hours. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. 
you need to talk to that manager if it makes you go in on Saturday. You work for yourself. Good for you. I couldn't do it. There's no way I could do it. There's way, there's way too many things where they, there's way too many things where people could just snooker you on and you're left holding the bag if you own your own business, in my opinion. But good for you. I fortunately do not think about what I do for a living while I'm not there. And I don't think I could do that if I had my own business. So. Okay, we're just gonna give this a base coat of the brown. Okay, that's done until, uh-oh, somebody has something to write. Hold on, I can't see. <laughs> now I gotta put my glasses on. That's about, uh, what is that, about a f 18 inches away from my face? I can't see it. All right, now we got our vision. Oh, wow, six of you guys. Welcome, welcome. Let's see. At the moment, with the COVID lockdowns, I've been getting whatever work I can, mostly any work, whatever work I can, mostly genealogy. But when everything is back open, I'll go back to doing guided tours. Oh, so you're a tour guy too, like um, uh, John Peter. Excellent. That's cool. Well, hopefully things get back to normal, obviously. Um, that's really cool that you could do something like that for a living. Excellent. Good for you, man. I always like when people can do what they, something that they like to do for a living. I'm not one of those guys that, man, that guy's got his, got it good. Screw that guy. No, man, be happy for people. Unless they're an asshole. Which case, nah. <laughs> I don't think that's the case with you. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm happy for people. I'm not a, I'm not a jealous person. Okay. All right. So this guy is the only guy that we have. Uh, we got to let this dry for maybe, and then we can do some dry brushing on there. Should I go ahead and paint the edge in black? Mm. Then I'll be dry brushing on top of that. No, no, let's not do that yet because I'm going to have to, I'll end up dry brushing over the edge maybe or something like that and cause a different type of an issue. Uh, I try not to be an a-hole. <laughs> well, it comes more naturally to some people, you know. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> Tour guide, that's cool. Yeah, it's difficult to be a tour guide now with no tours. I was looking at some pictures that somebody posted the other time from Europe and I don't know. I look forward to one day maybe going to Europe for my first time. We'll see. I think that what's going to surprise me about Europe is I have this perception of what it is and it's not that way because for the most part, you have this perception that you think old things are over here and the modern part of the city is over here. Not that it's all mixed in between each other. And I know it's mixed in between each other, but it's just this perception of, you know, that the old isn't intermixed with the new, but that's, I know that's not the case. So it's going to be kind of uh, like 
Really? They put a McDonald's there? <laughs> okay, let's see what we've got. Um, crossbowmen. Now, these are some of the, I believe these are actually round way crossbowmen figures. Um, these in particular are Swiss because they have these silly boots, I'm pretty sure. But they would work for them. This is actually, these look like the same figure, but it's two different poses. Do I need to do another crossbowman stand with the Germans? If I do, I may save some of these figures. Well, let's just see how they would fit on here, okay? Let's take a look at that. This thing's dry. Let's do some brainstorming here. This is gonna be sitting on the stand like so. And then we're gonna have some figures all around Definitely one on each side like that. And I could possibly put two guys here in the middle, but I don't think this figure is going to fit. It sticks out too far. So I need to see if I've got some crossbowmen that are maybe a little bit more standing up. And obviously we'll take these little, well, we, won't, we don't have to here, but we'll take the bases off the guys here in the middle. Okay, so I'm good with two crossbowmen on the ground and some different one guys, different guys there. Um, and for good measure, we'll do guys that are different. So this guy is different from him. So we're going to do one of each of those. All right, that's decided. That's what I do. That's how I, that's how I figure out my army stuff. I'm like, okay, well, I don't want, this doesn't make any sense that would go with this. Now here's some handgunners that I have. I want to say these guys are old alternative armies guys. I didn't buy them directly from them. I bought them when I grabbed that. So, you know that guy has all those extra figures? Yeah, it's me. So this is where it comes in handy. Let's take a look at these two guys and see if they would fit on here. Okay, he's just kind of a basic looking figure. I believe this is supposed to be some kind of handgun that he has. It's pretty piss poor the way it's done, but it's short which means it might actually fit okay in here. And you know what? Let's um let's take some of his base off because he's extra tall by having this base and right now it looks like he almost fits in there. So I have 8 of these figures and I haven't used them ever. So I'm not worried about maybe bookering one of them up because I hadn't used them yet. So maybe 10 years ago, my wife, I do not own any Dremel tool. And I've talked about wanting one. About 10 years ago, my wife went to a garage sale and bought me a Dremel-esque tool. It's another brand. Um, it's pretty shitty, but she got a really good price on it, like $15 for like the machine and, and everything it could do. And it has enough power. It's just not, it's not quality like a Dremel. And I've used a Dremel before. But I don't have much of a use for it. It's just too, it's just too fast a power setting. So yeah, I could get one of those speed reducing things, but... Most of the stuff I'm working with, a file like this will do just fine. I did use a Dremel like when I was working on some of the um, Gasland cars to try to like um, cut down parts of them, but that's really dangerous. I, I feel like using some of those, do, doing some of those things that I've had to do with like that that tool are more dangerous than firearms, like by a factor of like a hundred. That is. Um, those cutoff wheels are just crazy and you've got your hand that close to it and if something goes wrong I'm cringing just thinking about it and I'm really careful yeah. half the thing is is you need to you need to have a firm grip on on what you're holding so it doesn't slip out of your hand but I'm fine without using uh, power tools for that kind of hard to film if I'm doing it all that wearing sound right Let's see how this guy fits in here. Because that is what these guys have. They was these little holes for the pistol ports. Pistol ports, though.
I guess we could put him like this, and then we put the other guy like this. They don't have to be pointing in there, which is a good thing because they don't really fit. Okay, so that's a candidate, maybe. All right, let's put these two guys to the side. Let's keep looking. Now, this is what I hate is what do I do with this? Oh, man. On to the floor. We'll have to sweep in here. It's not like it's a big mess, but... That's not that, that's not that. Oh. See if there's any crossbowmen in here. Do a lot of tours of the city of York. It's like there's been a minister there since 627. That pub there is from 1503, and you know, Yoshi opened in 2015. Yeah. Raise your wagon. No, the problem is here if the guy's standing on the wood plank. It's not a problem. I did it on the other one, which was a bigger problem than this one. I'm just looking for the right figures here. Now, here's the same type of hang that I use for the Hungarians. I don't think I'm going to use him. Not because I don't like him, just for variety. Okay, here's a figure. Here's a crossbowman guy. This is a minifix crossbowman, and this might be a Hussite or something like that. Um, but one thing they do with their crossbowman, I don't even have another crossbowman in here. One thing minifix sometimes does with their crossbowman, well, they may do it on all their crossbowmen, is they're they turn their crossbow 90 degrees, and it's probably for casting purposes. So what you got to do is, where's my uh, X-Acto knife? And I got lots of these guys, so if I mess this up, then it's not a big deal. You got to look and see which way it's twisted. So it looks like it's twisted this way. So you just... Twist it back. Done. Let's clean this thing up and see what this guy looks like. Now, the minifix guys have really thin bases. Well, I don't want to be one of those people that just plops a guy on here and there's a base on there. I've seen other folks do that. I, I No, I'm not going to have that. So I was reading an article or, yeah, it was an article. It might not have been in a printed magazine. It was on the internet or something like that. And uh, oh, that's a good example. Like, we're not going to use that for the back of this. Um, I don't mind filing this down, but I do like to take the big chunk first. So I'm not... Spend all week doing that. But this article claimed that um, it was a plastic model. Okay, let's see if this has one of them. I actually read this and I hadn't tried it yet. Come on. Here we go. Jeez, be difficult. Um, oh, I didn't know these guys were spray painted green. I thought this was the original green it came in. So long ago since I had those. But it's talking about taking the mold lines off plastic models using the back of the X-Acto knife. So instead of doing this side, use the back side. And I'm like, what? That never would have occurred to me to do that. Well, I guess it does work. I mean, I don't use the back of the razor much. Much less this. Okay, cool. Hey, learn something new every day. We didn't know that back in the day of, uh, back in the early 1990s when I built plastic models. So, that's cool. <laughs> this thing have any mold lines? Well, when I come across them, here's one. Let's see if that works here. 
Yeah, we just normally we just scrape with the front. <laughs> Learn something new every day. Excellent. Thank you, unnamed person that posted on the internet. Hey, I don't have all the answers. I have all the questions. <laughs> uh, so the question is, will that work? Like, let's say I want to take this off the top of them. Will that work on that too? I'll be damned it does. Oh, good. Now I have to go rescue all those exacto blades that I threw away because the blade was dull because the backside wouldn't have been. Okay, we're definitely using one of these. Okay, so I think this is going to be the mix is we have one of these guys. We have one, two, one each of those, and then this guy. And I got four figures that are different. You know, I don't want to use the same figure if I don't have to, unless it's some kind of a uniform unit. And random crossbows on a war wagon would not be that. And John Peter, we were just talking about you, and you appeared just like a genie. So now we got. Uh, I got three. I got three people. I got like three or four Polish people that come on, some more frequently than other, and now two tour guides. Excellent. <laughs> uh, oh, Marco, welcome, Marco. You're. Your name's Greek, I'm taking, right? I'm glad you enjoyed that, uh, that Can I book. That's, there's just, the bad thing is you're, there's, there's nothing I've come across that's, as, that's half as good as that. Um, could I do a step-by-step -step video on your basic overall technique for painting? Stuff like that exists out there, but I appreciate your perspective. Um... I could try. It could take. It takes a long time. You mean like my basing thing? Yeah, it takes a long time. Um, Tony has just told me you're a tour guide. Where do you work? I only ask as my main job too when there isn't a pandemic. Yep, Greek and Texan. Okay, I've been to Texas a couple times. I think Texas is really interesting, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I I. I, uh, Texas just seem, I mean, obviously there's different parts of Texas. It seems very old school, which I'm kind of enjoying. I call it a thing these days. <laughs> I'm old school. So I explained it to somebody the other day. I said, you know, I'm 49, but my dad was. Sorry, doing morning math. My dad was almost my age when I was born. So it's almost like we skipped a generation. So. It's almost like I'm a, uh, I'm a boomer. Uh-oh. I'm a boomer more than 71. So, uh, yeah, I'm old school. Yeah, I like Texas. It was interesting. You guys wear boots for everything, man, for swimming. <laughs> and by boots, I mean cowboy boots. I'm not a, I don't think you'd catch me in cowboy boots. Although rumor has it when I was uh, six or seven years old, I would always wear them. I don't know why, because I never wore Westerns or anything, but they, they actually su supposedly banned me from wearing them at school because I like to kick other kids. Well, shouldn't have gotten in my way. <laughs> no, no cowboy boots for me. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, Texas is an interesting place. 
when I went to Colorado, I think I was expecting Colorado to be more tech, more like Texas than it is. It was, um, I was expecting Colorado to be more, uh, steak and potatoes than, um, avocado toast and, um, tapenade. Not that there's anything wrong with those things, just, uh, you know what I'm getting at. <laughs> uh, you're wearing boots right now. Yeah. See, I know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm captain over generalization any, any, anyways. That's, uh, hey, generalizations are generally true. That's why they're called that. Uh, to me, so I, one of my first jobs was working in a hobby store and we had lots of those models and I always called them Tamiya, but apparently I've been saying it wrong the whole time. It's Tamiya, but, uh, what do I know? I'm not Japanese. I just drive Japanese vehicles, um, and drink Japanese whiskey. Um, Florida and Alaska are the only other states I'd live. I don't know. Alaska just... People rave about Alaska, but think about it. Russia didn't want it. But they kept Siberia. So how shitty a place really is it? <laughs> no, it's beautiful. I've seen the pictures. It's, you know, for somebody who lives in, who's lived in Florida basically their whole life. Uh, yeah, the mountains are just, it, it's like, it might as well be the moon, it might as well be another planet. It's very mesmerizing for us. Um, so, I can't imagine living somewhere it's not Florida. It's just, it, I think it's the idea of it, you know? It's the two coasts, man. Once you get used to having two coasts, it's pretty freaking awesome. I, I love going to the beach. I don't go enough. It's good for me. It's good for my soul. It's good for my skin. Um, I have psoriasis. Not super bad. Don't go, If you don't know what that is, please do not go online and look for the pictures. There's leprosy-like pictures, but there's some poor folks that have extreme conditions of that. But sun and salt water, excellent for me. I just, you know, I'm right in, smack in the middle of the state, which... In a couple months, it'll be exactly where you want to be when hurricane season. So they don't they don't come here. I don't fear for my figures during hurricane season. Let's put it that way. But Alaska, huh? Yeah, we were gonna go on an Alaska cruise, and then we figure out how much it was gonna cost. And then the big problem is is. Now you have to take a flight to get on a cruise, so you're limited by how much things you bring on uh, on your carry-on, which is a problem because when you go on a cruise ship, if you guys have never been on one, there's basically no limit to how much you can bring. You could say like, I don't know which, I don't want to cut it down to only bringing 20 shoes, so just bring every pair of shoes you have. Not, not that I have more than 20 pairs of shoes, but... Um, anywho. Ooh, I cut off too much of that. Oh, well, boogered that guy up. I mean, it would work, but now nah, we'll make him work. We'll just cut the other part of the crossbow to look the same. Hey, I made a mistake again. Um, still looks better than some of the minifigs crossbows. I don't care for those. There we go. Now we're even. But, um, yeah, we lost interest when we figured out, oh, we're going to have to buy a plane ticket and the cruise is expensive and we're limited on how we can bring in, you know, and then this hit. So, you know, who knows if there'll ever be another cruise. But that was our vacation of choice for relaxation, for sure, because it is no, that's a definitely no worries, mate, vacation. You relax so much on a cruise that when you get back, on, back on land, you're like, everything becomes too much trouble, like, you know, throwing your garbage away and stuff. It's like, oh, you mean somebody's not going to come by the table and put this away for us? You know, you develop bad, lazy habits, but.
Stereotypes exist for a reason. <laughs> Few humans, excellent. I do love the beach. Psoriasis sucks. It's, you know, there's worse things. I've had it for, how long have I had it? Well, it kept me out of the service. I was literally on my way out to boot camp. And they're like, oh, you have this. You can't go now. I'm like, but I'm going to be a Cuban in the Navy. Who the hell would want a Cuban in the Navy? I mean, I was born here, but um, yeah, it kept me out of the service. And uh, it's probably a good thing now in retrospect. I wouldn't have done well in the service. I'm a, kind of a free thinker and I don't need all kinds of rules to keep me from misbehaving. I really don't. I mean, um, you know where to find me. I'm right here. You know, I'm not destroying things. <laughs> um, so what is what is that? That was 1991, 1992? Yeah. So I tried this new medicine. I'm trying this new medicine that um, hopefully it'll it'll work because if you're using something topical, um, it just takes forever to put it all over where you have it. And I don't have it everywhere. You know, it's, you know, the worst thing about it is when you go somewhere and people ask, what is that? It's like, dude, if I see somebody with like a, um, that's been in a fire or something like that, I don't ask them what the hell happened to you. It's like, you're making that person relive something. It's not like they asked, you know, to do that. But I don't have it that bad, but you just get over it. Every something. I'm glad that what I have is on the outside of me and I don't have any like liver or kidney issues or stuff like that. That's a lot more serious. The, the bad thing about it is it really doesn't have a cure. So it's like, you're going to have it for the rest of your life. And uh, I just tried a new medicine uh, recently and they wouldn't tell me what the copay was on it. And they finally called me up and said, okay, your copay is going to be $350 a month. And they said, that's not too bad, is it? And I'm like, for something that there's no cure for, that's not life-threatening. Because if it was life-threatening, yeah, you you know, if you have to take these pills that depends whether you live or die, yeah, you freaking pay it. But not for something that's, you know, your life doesn't depend on it. So um, I told my wife, I said, you know, it, all that means is when we get older, we're going to have to retire closer to the beach. Because, you know, once you get to a certain age... You're not going to be able to afford that. So it's like, you know, all I got to do is I don't have it on any part of, I, I have a perpetual tan on my arms because I'm always in and out. But, you know, this is, this is year round. I have this and I don't have any here because it's always in the sun. So we just need to get in the sun a little bit more. No big deal. Everybody's got something, you know. Some people have mental issues. Well, I'm just taking this too long. We don't need to see this. We, there's time for that to do, do that later. You know, yeah, I'm going to grind those down a little bit more before I glue them. I think I'm going to learn that from the other guys I did. I was just going to glue them on pennies. But nah, we need, to, we need to file them down a little bit more. All right, let's go back to this guy that we were doing. I'm just having fun here. So hopefully you guys are as well. Working on your hobby stuff. Yeah, everybody's got something. But that is the worst thing. The worst thing is having to explain to people. Because honestly, the first time I heard it, I'm like, what kind of liver is that? Because you think of cirrhosis. And it's like, no, it's, it's nothing like that, luckily. So I don't like being, one of my pet peeves is being questioned. You know, you go somewhere and what are you doing? So there's a thing called, these friends of ours do this thing called geocaching. If you guys know what it is, it's, I'm not going to go into detail in it, but there is, there's hidden things in different places and they're not necessarily for the purpose of finding it, just kind of a fun little, like a treasure hunt. And sometimes you'll leave something or it sounds really nefarious. Uh, and I guess it could be, 
but um, this friend of ours does it with her kids and they've done it for a long time. So I started doing it with my daughter, but I start getting into these situations where, and I don't do things that are necessarily on somebody's property because I respect people. I'm big on people's property rights. Like I don't go on people's property. Uh, that's just not cool. I wouldn't want somebody doing that to me. And, um, and um, people are like, you know, what are you doing here? And I'm like, I got to stop doing this. I'm going to have a confrontation with someone because I do not like being questioned. Um, am I being detained? <laughs> um, so I'm like, nah, there's just too many people doing weird stuff in this world. That I don't need to, to give out like that's what I'm doing. Like I'm hiding some drug stash or something. So I'm like, no, this really thing isn't for me. I don't, I don't like being... Uh, I don't like being questioned. That's why I don't like cops. I don't necessarily dislike cops, but I don't want to be pulled over by someone that's like, you know, what are you doing here? And I'm like, all right, Mr. Officer, let's pull our records out and see who should be questioning who. <laughs> I don't dislike cops. They just, uh, I don't want to, I don't want them getting in my business. Um, it's just a waste of their time if they get in my business, you know. It's like if you ask me to take a drug check test, it's like, dude, you're just wasting my time and filling my bladder, you know. All right, let's see what we got here. Love the Alamo. So we were going to go to the Alamo last February. Last February, yeah. Um, my wife's brother um, was getting married in Austin. And because of COVID, they had to cancel it and moved it back to Miami. And um, we were going to do a... I've been to Houston is where I've been and um, for work. And uh, yeah, I wanted to check out the old battleship and um, Alamo and that kind of stuff. So yeah. Yeah, another time. Um, love the Alamo. San Antonio is great. Been to London. Not crazy about big cities. I'm not either. But it's a great experience. The British Museum is beautiful. That's cool. If you ever suggest coming back, I'd suggest places other than London. It's a great city, but it's not like most of other places in the UK. If that makes sense, it makes complete sense to me. It's like New York is not the United States. Just like Paris is probably not France. People always like to... I'm not defending the French, but I know lots of people that are extremely anti-French. And I've met people from France, and they're perfectly fine. But you can't judge people from Paris as all French people, just like you should not, you know... Robert De Niro and people like that are not typical Americans, okay? <laughs> this is New York is not the United States. Thank God, I wouldn't live here. I'm, I'm done with, by the way, I'm done with those movies that are like very New York-y. Like, no, I don't, I don't want to listen to people that speak like that on a daily, day, daily basis. No, thanks. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes total sense. London is not like the rest of the United Kingdom. I agree with it. I get it. I'm kind of thrifty with things that I don't have an unlimited supply of. Speaking of an unlimited supply of, I hit the treasure trove this week because if you saw my my 20 millimeter vehicles, the material that I um, that I base these on are some shims from work, and we're out of this size. And I found a place on eBay where I can get them 
uh, not eBay, but I can order direct from this company, but it's like $75 minimum order. And I'm like, I don't think I need to order $75 of this stuff. Um, so I've been looking around in the yard at work and see if I come across this material. Cause you know, the guys in the yard throw shit everywhere. You know, I'm going to come across, you know, one piece here, one piece there. You know, I could probably put two vehicles on this. Well, one of the guys found a treasure trove. Um, a whole stack of this stuff. So I'm good forever now. So that's like hitting the lottery. Now I got no excuse to base all the vehicles, right? Now it's really nice. It's really good material. I mean, it's made for, um, you know, putting concrete on top of it. So it could certainly handle, you know, your little plastic model. And then I put a little magnet underneath it. So it works on there nicely. All right, can we get these two colors dry brushed in the next 15 minutes? We'll see. It depends if I keep talking about, uh, you know, I'm not in a rush, so we're just hanging out here. These guys will get done when they get done, and we'll do them upright. And tomorrow we will be on again. Tomorrow morning we'll do our normal extravaganza painting session starting at the same time probably running into about eight or so all right bye-bye mm -hmm. cj have a good day at work uh Playing trip to London for years, travel restrictions, and work schedule keep putting off. It's been several times, and always business. I want to go to that tank museum. I want to go to the Bovington. But, you know, again, it's one of those things that, you know, I want to go to the tank museum with Mitch. <laughs> I'm not traveling to Europe with him. Sorry. Sorry, pal. <laughs> The thing about museums, though, especially now with the Internet, is if you go to a museum about a subject that you know a lot about, you're going to find stuff that's just wrong in the museum. And, you know, you're going to end up being that museum guest. Like, they didn't use that with the other thing. And Yeah, I don't know when the travel restrictions are going to be lifted, and I'm not worried about it. I mean... Work's too busy to be taken off for two weeks to go to Europe anyway, so. So today, I'm gonna do something a little different. I gotta go take the cars for a PM. If you guys don't know what that is, that's a preventative maintenance. Also a fancy name for oil change. And uh, we're gonna take a look at some vehicles because time's coming unfortunately to to give the lease back and it's going to be an interesting year for me because there's not a whole lot of options i i did not expect there to be a supply um crunch on uh on what was being produced so we might be I might be less than excited about what I have to drive the next three years. No, we will see. First world problems, right? No, you spend a lot of money on this, so you don't want to drive something you're unhappy with. <clears throat> Yeah, this, this year was the year of they didn't come out with new models and stuff. They just kind of uh, poked along with what they had before. So we'll see. I just, uh, my only concern is, um, you know, when I think about things for a long time, I almost always come up with the right decision. And it's the fear of making the wrong one that's always troubles me. It, you know, the analysis paralysis.
you know. That's why sometimes I haven't gotten more things painted. Well, I don't know what color I'm going to paint his pants, so let me move on and go to something else. So, um, the analysis paralysis is causes paralysis, hence the name. Okay. Uh, even watching your brushing technique, that was cool. Can you talk about what you're doing? Dry brushing? Yes, just on this. Just on this, I've got my three colors that I normally do. What, you don't, you've never watched this before? I just stopped talking about it. I figured people would be tired of it. So this is my normal temperate zone colors that I used. And uh, this is uh, chocolate brown, the Yeho, paint that overall. And then I dry brush, US field drab, and then dry brush. Uh, you can't tell what this is, but this is Iraqi sand. And those three together work really well. Uh, on top of this uh, Liquitex, which has some nice texture, some three dimensionality, three dimensionality to it. Whew. Drink. Uh, Maramai, day old Starbucks. Um, and, um, yeah, that's what, I, that's what I'll do. And then we'll do the, um, this is all described in that little video. If you see that there's, I have a video of my basing technique. It goes over this exactly with these colors. So that's going to do, um, you know, you can pause that and take a look And it's, it's done in, I think eight times view. So the video is only like four minutes long and it goes through everything I do on the basing. Um, that video took a long time to make. It was, um, it didn't take a long time to film. It took a long time piecing all the parts together. So, um, and that's a video that takes time to edit, not necessarily to compile. It's the compiling that drives me crazy on, um, on regular videos, you know? And for those of you guys that don't know, that's the part where you have the video together and you're like, all right, let's put it in a format that we can upload it to YouTube. And it usually takes about as long as the video is long. So if you have a video that's two hours long, it's compressing on your phone, in my case, for two hours. And um, yeah, so during which time I can't use the phone and I have to keep refreshing it. Or it'll go to sleep and stop the process. So it's a, it's basically a pain in the ass. I can't just go to sleep and, and we're just going to go just really lightly there. See, this is this this light rape in the video it washes it out completely. Um, and um, but yeah, that's the pain in the ass part is the the compiling. It's called exporting, but um, it should be, you know, it should be called compressing the file for the purpose of export. <laughs> that's, that's the frustrating part of it all. Yeah, I figured Mavro was Greek. Or I figured it was Greek or Serbian or something like that. Got to be careful. I don't want to call people's things that they aren't, you know. When we travel and we go to, well, we still travel sometimes. My daughter does some competitive type swimming and we go travel some other places and we got to look for a place to eat. We're always on the way looking for German places and Greek places, almost always. So love that Greek food.
So as someone from Greece, what is your favorite Greek city-state? Like if you had to build a, um, a city-state army, would it be Athens, Sparta, Thebes? Do you have a preference? Um, is Alexander Greek to you? So I painted the edge in black, even though I said I wasn't going to do that. See, you, you guys just, you can't, you got to keep me on a short leash, man. It's not a big deal. I'm just not, now I got to go back and do it. Duma. <laughs> I can fix anything, but the whole point is to just not even have to fix it to begin with. Serbs and Greeks are virtually the same people. Okay. Would Serbs agree with you? <laughs> and neither one of them like the Turks, right? <laughs> I got uh, my buddy Joe's just building a Serbian army. He's, uh, I don't know if he started an army yet. I think they're next in his queue. So that's cool. They, um, They'll fight my Ottomans. Now, I'll have you know, my people fought the Ottomans too. But we won. Oh, burn. <laughs> we beat the Ottomans, but got smoked by the Dutch. Go figure, right? <laughs> it's the little countries. <laughs> oh, man. Luke's APS Game Geek quick basing material is killing this kind of basing skill craft. I used to subscribe to him, but man, his accent is really hard to follow sometimes. You guys in the UK don't all have the same accent, and you've got, you know, some are just like very broken, and he's has kind of a broken one. Um, I started watching his stuff, and um, maybe I'll check out and see what he does for basing technique, but I'm... Um, See, some things, even though they're faster, I don't necessarily enjoy them more. I don't mind things taking a long time. Um, the stuff that I saw him do, it seemed like he cut a lot of corners. I think I watched him like a couple of videos, like he was making his own terrain map. I don't know. He's He's got a lot more followers than I do, so what do I know? But um, it's, he's very difficult to follow with his accent. So sometimes, um, and I haven't seen the terrain tutor in a while. His, his accent's easier to follow. So I have the, this one guy that I follow on his channel. He's from Scotland and He's a magnificent uh, vehicle painter. His vehicles are magnificent. I, I had closed captions turned on one time, and it was absolutely hilarious what the automated closed captions were speaking. I mean, I could have made a comedy show from it. It was hilarious. <laughs> oh. Not Sparta. I like Athens. I would pick Macedonia because, yes, Alexander is 1 million percent Greek, born within borders of modern Greece, called himself Greek, took revenge on Persian for attacking Greece. Okay. Why spend hours painting a model and one minute basing? Okay. 
base material is too large for 15s and below. It has to be sifted first because the scale of the pebbles are too large for 15 and below. Oh, yeah. Well, I have the same thing that everybody else has. And that's what that is. You'll see somebody on the internet and you're like, you know what? That guy's really good. I like what he did. But I think I'm experienced enough to kind of be able to figure out, oh, this guy did this this way. And I find it empowering when I see somebody who's, who's, whose technique is better than mine. There's, I guess everybody's that way, but man, there's, there's a couple of people that I follow. One person in particular that is just, he is the freaking trinity of painting. And Tufts, I didn't use Tufts five years ago. Um, I've been doing this type of basing technique probably for about 10, maybe 11 years. No, maybe longer than that. My Japanese were the first one. I did them in 2009. So, yeah, 11 years, 12 years. Um, but the Tufts, I didn't start adding the Tufts until like five years ago to take it to the next level. And, um, yeah, it's good. You learn from each other. Sometimes you learn what not to do. <laughs> like, I don't like what Tony's doing. Let's not do that. Okay, well... Hey, I'm just, I'm not trying to convert anybody, you know, you guys like your method by all means. Um, back to Greeks. Um, so here in the U S well, you're from here. So, you know, uh, the big Greek exposure is in, um, in sixth grade in uh, middle school. And, uh, I remember the Spartans and the Athenians and I was, was a fan of the Spartans. Um, I don't know why, but now, yeah, I like the Athenians. My, I, I have kicked some serious ass with an Athen with Athenian army. So, um, I think I did the, I think I did the math. I'm like twelve and two or something with the Athenians. Just something crazy. So, I do have that army. I've got a couple of elements painted. You guys want to see that? Well, not elements. I got the figures painted. I think they're floating around here somewhere. Yeah, here they are. They're beautiful Zeistan figures. Oh, they're dusty. <sighs> Poor little Saloy. And I like the fact that they don't come with javelins and you have to put them in yourself. Because then you know what? I put ones in that don't bend. So here's this guy. I got four of them. Just got to find them all. And these are for my Athenian army. Oh. Wrong guy. This is a Chinese commander. I see. I can't see at a distance. Uh, where are they? There's four of them. Oh, here they are. Oh, I lied. There's five. Oh, you'll like the last one. We'll save the good guy for last. Okay. Here's another story. Never underestimate this alloy. I painted these guys about 2009, and they still haven't been based yet. Just kind of floating out here. Light horse. And another light horse. This is a stand of light horse and a stand of alloy. And then here's my first hoplite, hand painted shield, of course, which is the whole point. Doesn't look that good on video. It looks better in person. Yeah. Anyhow. Problem is Mitch has all the Athenian armies, has all the Greek armies, so there's not a big incentive of me doing it, but I love the I've I'm I've kicked some serious ass with the Athenian army. I like spear. And they're littoral too. You can cause all kinds of like mayhem with those guys. So you talking about my friend Leon T sixty six. I follow him too. I don't think I've seen much of the stuff. I'm talking about uh, Paul Alba. 
Paul Alba Scotland is what he goes by on here. His his vehicles are beautiful, but he's very difficult to understand, um, at least for me. Um, hell of a nice guy though, excellent painter. I'm brand new to the hobby. Convert away? Nah, I'm not. That's, I have the wrong personality type for that. Uh, people like to convert people to like folks that are got something to prove. I don't have anything to prove. I'm just we're just having fun. We're having a fun conversation here. Become a model, then find shortcuts. You will have armies that just gain peace of works of art. Yep. Yeah. yeah, Paul is awesome. I I couldn't do what he does, where he starts fifty vehicles. No. I got to do one at a time. I've tried that method. It doesn't work for me. Um, it doesn't work for me. Um, yeah, I've got, um, here's some of the stuff that he has. I've got one of JSU and where's my, this old kit. This isn't complete yet. I got old stuff I had like 20, 30 years ago, whatever. This isn't complete yet, but either, but. I create my own wash. I, I know the method that Paul does and a couple of other people do. I just, I didn't want to spend $50 on all these materials. And I think some of, sometimes the vehicles look too realistic. Um, I don't mean that as a, a to, to poo-poo what they're doing. They look better than a real vehicle. But I like things that look more like, you know, a gaming piece. I mean, here's one of my Brits. You know, they don't look ultra realistic. They still look like a game piece. And I want the vehicle to look equivalent. When you have an ultra realistic looking vehicle with a paint chipping and everything. Um, I just don't think that they, they, I like a different look. Let's put it that way. Not poo poo in their work. Their, their work is phenomenal. But, um, and that's also my way of saying that way I don't have to spend 24 hours on a vehicle. Because that's what it would take. Um, I don't like the, the pay. It's just too much. Um, cause what, what ends up happening is, is you give something like a wash and then when you start doing the dusting phase, you fill in all the holes that the wash did. So it makes it look more subtle, not, um, exaggerated with the black lining and stuff, which I don't really use black lining, but I use equivalent of it. I just leave the black behind. Uh, more than go back in and, and actually put an actual line in there. But um, so I think that's what it is. It's the phase where they add the dusting that it becomes to um, like this one. Like this thing's basically done. I'm going to finish basing it. Get this done. And this is good for me. I mean, yes, I could go in there and spend another month doing it. I know what the techniques are, I know what the materials are. There's some excellent videos on it, but. I don't need to do more detail than this for it to look like a gaming piece that I'm happy with. So, um, okay, well, I gotta go because I gotta wake some people up. Uh, Airbrush, you got one. No, I'm not gonna buy one. No, I, I don't wanna fight with it. And I don't think that that really improves anything that I could do other than that whole, what's the whole thing where you, it's got the weird freaking name where you spray everything white and the, the modulation. I don't think the modulation adds much at this scale. Um, it looks cool, but I just think that, nah, I'm good. I had an, I had a, I used to use an airbrush back in the nineties where I used to work at the hobby store and it just takes just way too long, but yeah. Yeah, he does plastic. His stuff is amazing. Victor, good morning. Just in time for me to leave. We got to go uh, car shopping, unfortunately, or car looking. Okay, folks. Well, same time, same bat, time, bat channel tomorrow morning. And um, we'll do our normal extravaganza of, uh, of that. And... Um, We'll uh, check it out. See you guys in the morning. Great conversation. Thanks for stopping by. Um, and we will uh, catch you guys later. Happy painting. Bye, guys.